Hello, so this is A Level Maths Tutor UK, and in today's video, we're going to look at sketching the graph y equals a to the power of x, where a is a bigger number than zero. So these type of graphs are called exponential graphs. You probably would have seen these uh, this word before. So exponential graphs or exponential functions. So we're just going to look at how we would sketch graphs of this type of form here, where you've got y equals a number to the power of x, where this number is bigger than zero. So to do these kind of graphs, we've got two cases. We've got the case where uh, this A is bigger than one. And we've also got the case where this A is between zero and one. So let's think about this case here where A is a bigger number than one. So for example, these ones here, I mean, I'll put like a, a bigger than or equal to sign there because we've got the uh, this first graph here that I've written here, Y equals one to the power of X. We've also got this one included here. So we'll go through this. So this red one first, and I'll do this in the color red. So Y equals one to the power of X. Now, one to the power of any number is actually just the number one. So um, what this first graph would be is just a straight, flat, horizontal line at y equals one. So that's our first graph there. So y equals one to the power of x. So we'll go on to the next one, so this green one. So y equals uh, two to the power of x. So basically, if you keep on plugging in numbers of x into the function, so plug in x equals zero, two to the power of zero is going to be one. So you're going to get a coordinate of there. Then plug in x equals one into this formula. So two to the power of one is two. So you get two somewhere, maybe there. And then plug in x equals two. So two to the power of two is four. So you may get something like this. So you kind of get like an exponential growth. Now, what happens when you plug in negative numbers? So this would be the positive side here. You're going to get these positive, um, this like exponential curve here. So what happens if you plug in for example, uh, negative one. So two to, the uh, two to the power of negative one. So that's going to be two, to, well, one over two, because remember, two to the power of minus one is the same as one over two to the one, which is one over two. So basically what's going to happen with these negative numbers is that the graph is going to kind of go like this instead. So it's going to kind of just uh, continue like this but never quite get to zero. So never quite touch zero on the y-axis. It will continue down uh, like so, like that. So that's going to be that graph there. Now, how about the next graph? So this blue one, y equals three to the power of x. So again, when you substitute x equals zero into this, you'll get one again. So it cross through at one there. So then when you plug in bigger and bigger x values, so x equals one, you get three, x equals two, you get nine. So you're going to get, again, an exponential graph but a steeper exponential graph because uh, it's going to grow exponentially faster than the first one. So this is y equals three to the power of x. And the last one, I mean, I, I've also forgot the negative side for this uh, y equals three to the x. Here. So y equals three to x on the negative side. Again, it's going to be even more uh, shallow on the negative side because, again, if you plug in x equals minus one, you would get three to the power minus one, which is one over three. And that's going to be a smaller number than this Um you'll get smaller y values compared with the previous one here, this y equals two to the x graph. So that would be uh, the y equals three to the x graph. And as you can imagine, this uh, y equals four to the x graph is gonna be even steeper. So again, it's gonna cross through at one because remember four to the power of zero is, uh, is one. So it's gonna have a y intercept to one. But again, it's gonna be even steeper. So perhaps something, uh, let me try that again, something more like this. But again, it's never gonna touch, in theory, never touch the x axis because, um, because remember, uh, regardless of what negative number you plug into this, you'll get closer and closer and closer to zero. So if you plug in four to the power minus 100, it's going to be absolutely tiny, um, but you'll never quite get to zero exactly. So it will continue onwards like that. I know this is a bit of a bad diagram, but if I try to move this uh, down a little bit like that, so maybe more like this more realistically, but they will cross through uh, the y-axis at y equals one, uh, because when you uh, do any number, to the power of, of zero, uh, you will get one. So that's the first case. Now let's look at this second case here where we've got y equals a number smaller than one between zero and one to the power of x. How about these kind of graphs? So we'll start with the first one here, the y equals half to the power of x. So it went, again, when you plug in half to the power of zero, x equals zero, you get one. So it's going to go through at one. Um, and then when you plug in x to the power, uh, when you plug in, for example, x equals one on the x-axis, so a half to the power of one is going to give you half. So you get something like this. And then if you plug in x equals two, half to the power two, half squared, that's going to be a quarter. So what you actually get with this one is, is this kind of exponential decay kind of gra uh, graph here. So you get this exponential decay graph like this. So this would be your y equals a half 
to the power of x. And then how about this one here? So y equals a third to the power of x. So again, you're going to get a y-intercept at 1 because a third to the power of 0 gives you 1. Uh, but this time, so what's going to happen is that when you plug in bigger x values, you're going to get smaller and smaller y values. So again, it's going to be a little bit more shallow down here. But that means on the other end, it's going to be more steep. It's going to be steeper like this because, for example, plug in x equals uh, minus 1. One third to the power of minus 1 is actually going to be 3. And 3 is a bigger number than uh a half to the power minus one, which is two. So you're going to get a steeper graph on the negative side. So this would be your, uh, so the green one's going to be your y equals a third to the power of x. And then this last one here, as you can imagine, same kind of shape, it's going to go for it one again. It's going to be even steeper than uh, these two here on the negative side, but it's going to go down shallower uh, than, the, uh, than the previous two on this side here. Sorry, this one should be in blue. Let me do this in blue instead. So something like this uh, for our final uh, graph here, for our final y equals a quarter to the power of x. So that's just a summary of how you can plot these exponential graphs uh, with values of a between 0 and infinity. Um, obviously, the problem with having negative values of a is that when you uh, raise negative numbers to the power of negative numbers, um, you, can, you, you will get undefined results, especially if you're going to raise it to the power of negative fractions. Um, you, you, that won't work. So you don't need to worry about plotting these exponential graphs for a being less than zero. You don't need to worry about that. You only need to worry about uh, plotting these exponential graphs when a is between zero and one. And just one more final point that I'm going to make as well. So let's look at this previous graph here. This y equals a half to the power of x graph. Let's just consider this one. So remember, y equals a half to the power of x. This number one half is just the same as two to the power of minus one. And this is all to the power of x. So using our laws of indices, we can multiply the powers. So minus one times x is two. Uh, it's just going to give you a minus x. So you get y equals uh, two to the minus x. So this graph up here is exactly the same as y equals two to the negative x. And this graph over here in green is exactly the same as the graph y equals three to the negative x. So for again, the same reasoning. Likewise with this final one, this graph here is the same as uh, y equals four to the minus x. So just bear in mind that actually it's more common that we actually write these equations of these exponential graphs like this rather than in these fractional forms here. So if you do get something in these fractional forms, normally it's just easier to convert them into these forms here. So sorry, this, uh, yeah, so what we can do, I've actually done the coloring in the one, wrong way around. So this should be green here. Uh, that should be green. And this one down here should be blue instead. Uh, sorry, blue. Let me get the right color. Uh, but yeah, you get the point. Uh, so um, again, yeah, this would be y equals uh, 3 to the minus x. This would be up here y equals 4 to the minus x. Sorry, 4 to the minus x. And the last one here would be y equals 2 to the minus x. So just be aware of that. Um, that with these exponentially decaying graphs, uh, we get these negative powers of x, or, we, or these negative powers of these a values uh, to the power of a negative x. Um, but with these exponentially growing graphs, we have um, we have just positive numbers bigger than one as our base numbers in our powers. Um, so yeah, that's just something to bear in mind. And again, that's how we would sketch these exponential curves.